Hi everyone, this is Nabir Watcher. It is August 29, 2017. And I'm going to show you today further proof of the lens array, how they work with their planets, because what I'm going to show you next, just how this further detail, how these lenses are bending the light from our skies so we don't see the incoming planets. Now, in this most recent web camera view, Lake Starnberg, Starnberger, we can see these lens lenses projecting two of them of most possibly green planets. That's why they're green. Now, I knew that the, these weren't lens flares, but since we got photographic picture of it in this video, the same object now caught reflecting off the water. So what we have is a lens here reflecting, creating a projection of this green object in like a holographic image and reflecting on the water. Now lens flares are in the lens. There is it impossible to reflect on the water. Please notice also the shape. I've shown you this before. Even hiding this very planet right there the actual object now everything that we're discussing today does not work very well on the horizon particularly at this five degree mark right here this is where we seem to catch and that's why they need a chemtrail very heavy because it doesn't work well again we see the projection here and we can see the planetary body here and they missed a spot, and now we get to catch a planet. So let me zoom in on this. I know we've seen this before, but this object right here, that's the moon. The sun is set the nighttime. We have, again, this projection here. I'm creating this line. It can possibly be seen with the naked eye, especially if it reflects, has a backdrop like clouds or other chemtrails to react with, and we can actually see this. Again, let me show the shadowy object appearing on the back side of the clouds. Now, for the sake of learning, I got to show you this because this is just going to be really cool. So, again, let me show you the time lapse video of the lens array as captured hovering i believe right above the orion constellation i have proof of that too so keep watching so here we see the lenses and the setting sun of australia and i believe we can see the lenses here now each one of these lenses are focused on a lens has their focus i believe on these lenses further out so they're spaced away from each other, creating what is called a cloaking field. And this cloaking field, so as the planetary objects pass in front of these overlapping lenses in the lens array, each lens, I believe, is focused on another lens. So you've got like a series of lenses all side by side overlapping each other, pointing at a further distant lens. This whole effect creates this thing called a cloaking field. So with that all put aside, let's get right into what I would like to show you that I caught on this camera. Now here is Lake Amherst web camera facing the northwest. Okay, north West. Well, I've got to translate this. Northwest. Facing northwest. I've got this on at least two cameras. This is quite spectacular because we've got them. Where I want to show you next. So in the next slide, we see the strange distortion here, which is the projection from the lens array of the setting sun. The planetary object that is caught in the sky. Now this here, I believe, is a boat in the background, but this is like this holographic projection that we catch. Now keep, watch the next frame. Now this 
projection is getting thicker and darker in this next shot. But now we see something very interesting here. Keep your eye on this hidden object here that they don't want you to see, which I believe the refracted outer edge. Go back one notch. Zoom that in. You can almost make out almost like this rainbow effect. Of course, you don't get all the colors of rainbow, so it certainly looks like chemtrails because there is like no rainbow colors. Where's the greens? All right, advancing forward. And now watch, we're gonna watch an eclipse with these mysterious holographic images and shadowy objects in the sun. There. Here you have what has been caught eclipse, beginning to eclipse the sun and the light from the one of the lenses of the lens array creating this orange-like effect in the sky. And this would be the projection. And I also keep notice of the camera. Watch how the light goes dim during this eclipse. While the sun simulator continues to shine in the sky, while the actual sun is being eclipsed by these objects. Let me show you this eclipse. So we have a projection here, out of focus planets. As these planetary objects are passing from two of them. Let's show another one. Okay. Now, here we have, you can almost make out, this is the setting sun that we've seen a few frames. Look at the huge shadowy hidden objects with the light distorting lens op system here. We have a, a hidden lens here and here creating these projections. Let's go back. In fact, let's keep, let me go back and I'm going to show you this in time lapse how this, how this thing works as it passes between the lens array from one lens to the next. The sun passes through it and we get this effect. And now we can see the shadowy object beginning to eclipse the sun. And I want, notice the total lock, light drop here. Do you see the light had suddenly dropped. Look at that. Nothing's in front of the sun. Nothing's changed. The f-stop changes slightly. And then it gets what I'd show in that other frame. Now look how creepily <laughs> red the sky gets during the sunset. Wow. Does that look normal at all? Let's zoom in on this still yet. We can still see the shadowy planet still trying to bend the light. And yet we catch this still shining. We can still catch it here. I believe the shadow of this planet further away has actually eclipsed the sun. And I want to notice the time frames here. We have 2100 hours at 29 August 29th. Again, and we see it here and another camera at the same time and uh, also facing the northwest. So where is all this place? Let's go back and look at this sun effect here. So now we know that we're looking at the northwest. Look at the intensely bright red sky after this object had set. Let's just stop it right there. Okay, so I want to notice this is the northwest fest, northwest facing camera with the sun this low on the horizon. So let's see where the stars were at that time. I want to show you that we're looking this area of the earth roughly over Italy, Germany, this region of the sky, that the sun was sitting relatively this high above the horizon and this strange object would have been lens array would have been about right here well, what do we got we would have been uh, roughly at about actually a bit a little lower in the sky that would have put us 
some are o o over the Orion's belt. So I'd say this lens array would have been probably covering series at the time, right about in this nick of the woods. Just exactly how big, I'm not sure. I do find it interesting that we know that Planet X is approaching Jupiter in the uh, Leo constellation. According to the ancient prophecy, we believe the object is heading along the ecliptic plane nearing Jupiter. Some think it'll actually hit Jupiter. But I believe when it gets to this spot, when Jupiter exits, that's when we're going to see it on the full moon in October 5th as Jupiter leaves. That's when I think we're going to see it. So you want to asking, I find it very peculiar that that's the same region that we find the lens array right here. So let's keep looking at the star systems and see where this thing is actually at because here is another area of Germany at the same time we see this same similar object let me zoom in on it it's uh so if you want to be looking for this thing you just gotta look at these star charts and start looking in the region of sky that I'd showed you check that out so here we have I believe to be planet X again we have an electric universe and some of you may say if we've that was that close then why aren't we getting title changes we have been getting title changes please go watch mb3 and look how people thought in brazil that they were going to have a tsunami and the tide completely receded and yet on the other side of the continent in chile they had raging waters not a tsunami just water waves so we've already covered that topic. Go watch it. Look it up. You'll find the, the tides receding. It's been happening, and it's going to happen again in a more severe way. So here we caught on a like I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I just wanted to show you this moon and back to this lens. I am confident this is no longer going to be considered to me a lens flare in the camera because it's now been proven to be reflecting on the water so here we caught on this camera two of the lens arrays in effect working to hide the planetary objects a lens here and a lens here as a i do believe i'm going to try and draw a picture just exactly how this works but again we're going to have lenses that are just basically overlapping one another each of the overlapping lenses all focus to a singular lens further away from the Earth. Hope that helps. So I think I'd shown you this one in this time last video, nearly the same time, the same direction. So as this thing is coming at us. So perhaps someone can help me out in the position of this thing, but I do believe it is heading straight for Jupiter as Jupiter leaves Virgo. I think that's when we're going to see it. So I do believe it's on its final approach because in my last video, I've saw a big red dot bigger than I've ever seen it before. So I could have showed you in my other video that <clears throat> this object is as big as reddish thing I've ever seen since I've been tracking this big red ball as it moves across the sky projecting its image that's absolutely insane it may i've still been looking for this camera look at the audit look how it projects that thing look at even reflecting off the water see that it's on the water it's reflecting off And like I was showing in some of my other videos, uh, the time lapse. Let's see if I can show you a quick demonstration of what I saw. This is what it would basically look like. I'd capture this with my own eyes. This effect right here. This is what it looks like from the sky if you do the time lapse. These little sun dogs that you're catching. So let me show you real quick about the uh, 
fake sun and how we get these halos. Again, we have the sun representing in the ceiling lamp, the fake sun, the flashlight with the fake clouds, well, or chemtrails, and the high altitude clouds, the low sun, big sun, low altitude clouds, big sun, and then when a planetary object shows up in front of it, we get those dark halos, like stuff represented in this. And the object gets closer to the sun, it gets more of the sun dogs, and then when it gets closer to the earth, the sun dogs diminish, and we get more of this effect. Again, look at the changing size of this halo. Look at the changing size of this fake sun in the center with the real sun behind it. And notice the outer diameter never changes while this inner completely changes with the changing altitude of the clouds. So, again, if that was a far away sun, the real sun in the center, then it should never change the size because its light rays would be basically straight towards the Earth and they want to be coming at the light, the Earth at an angle. So, let me show you this video again. To me, I finally don't like to post videos too much unless I got some pretty compelling evidence. And when I see these shadowy objects that we catch on web cameras, they just happen to land in front of the camera, in front of the sun, creating these sun dogs and eclipses that we saw in this very video. Look at the light level change. You see the change of light. Look how it got dark. And look how we're getting this effect right there. To me, that's awesome. <laughs> yep, so there you go, your projections and your eclipses caught on camera. If you've got videos like this, catch it on video or time lapse, even better. Again, please copy, like, and share this video. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.